Hello and welcome back to the channel. You've joined us for a slightly different approach. Today we're going to be doing a, a clinical history as we might encounter at finals. So that's going to involve myself being the patient. We're going to take some information as to what, uh, why I've come into the surgery. I'll then be providing information based on an examination that we're not going to be doing um, and then we're going to work out what our differentials and management plan are off the back of that. So, with no further ado, you're in the hot seat. Cool. Um, so, hi, I'm Atava. I'm one of the medical students. Can I just start by confirming your name and date of birth, please? Yes, it's James Gill, 1st of the 1st, 1970. And it's right to call you James today? Certainly. So, James, today I've been asked to come in to ask you a few questions, do an examination and do a management plan with you. Everything I do will be checked over by the GP and they can confirm or deny whether I've done it right or wrong. Is that okay with you? Sure. So how can I help you today? Um, I'm, I'm just finding I'm short of breath. More rough than not. Like, if I try and go upstairs, then I used to get a little bit short of breath at the top, as you would do when you run upstairs anyway. But now I'm just finding that some days I'll have to stop and catch my breath whilst going up the stairs. And it's just been getting worse over time. And I'm, I'm worried that there's something going on in my chest. I mean, if I look back, I'm just getting lots of... Over, over winter, I get loads of chest infections now. And I'm worried that there's, there's something gone wrong. So I've got some damage that's stopping me breathing properly. Fine. When you say some damage that might be stopping you breathing, what's making you think something like that? Well, just the fact I'm getting all these coughs and infections and things that every time I get one it takes me longer to get back to well I'm not even getting back to normal I've always got this shortness of breath but it's just worse when I get them and when you get the shortness of breath are you noticing any pain anywhere mm, not really if I've got a really good going cough then sometimes it can hurt when I've had a big coughing fit but otherwise no and are you bringing anything up when you cough normally more often than not, you know, particularly in the mornings, I'll be coughing just, you know, white muck. Um, but if things have gotten worse, it can be, you know, if I'm feeling very unwell, then it can be quite green and gacky. Fine. And how long do these episodes of shortness of breath last for approximately? Well, so when I'm going up the stairs, um, you know, things can settle down after about five minutes or so. It's not too bad. Mm. OK. But um... the, the low level is always, I just feel I'm a bit... Like, I can't get a full breath sometimes. Do you feel like your chest is constantly tight? Yeah, it's, it's, it's more that I can't breathe in. OK, and that's fine. And in regards with when you get the shortness of breath, do you find sort of your heart pumping out your chest, so like any palpitations or anything like that? Not really, no. I mean, obviously I've had to work harder, but I've not been aware of any problems with my heart. You said that going up the stairs is difficult. Are there any sort of other activities in day-to-day -day life that you're struggling with now due to this? Well, everything's just that little bit more challenging. So I'm, I'm aware I'm parking closer to the supermarket now because I'll get short of breath if I've worked the far side of the car park. You know, if I'm trying to put up, you know, washing on the line, it's all good, you know, carrying the, 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 the heavy laundry over, but then I'll have to stop and wait, catch my breath. Mm. There's nothing I can't do, but everything's just that little bit more difficult than it was. Yeah, that sounds really difficult. And how long have you said it's been going on for? I've noticed it's, you know, it, it, I'm pet over the last year, but it's probably been the last year or two, maybe. Okay. I thought I was just getting older, but actually, I think there's something wrong. Fine. And do you find yourself short? Is there a time in the day when it's worst? Sorry, I should ask. Maybe a little bit in the morning, but not really. OK. And do you find yourself waking up in the middle of the night, short of breath or anything like that? No, I sleep quite well, I think. And have you ever brought up any blood or anything like that when you're coughing? Oh, no, I'd have been straight down if I had. OK, I'm going to ask you a few questions and they might seem like they're out of the blue, but it's just to check everything else is going well in your mm -hmm. lifestyle. So you haven't noticed any blood when coughing, but have you noticed any blood anywhere else? Uh, when you put anywhere so else? So sort of, you know, when you're going... To the toilet, have you noticed any blood oh, or no, anything no. like that? No. Have you noticed any new lumps or bumps anywhere? No. Any unexpected weight loss? No, in fact, it's going up, unfortunately. OK. And any changes in bowel habits? No. And are you eating and drinking OK? Yeah, probably too much, but yeah. Fever or temperature? No. Nothing like that, that's fine. And have you noticed anything that's making the cough worse? Um... 
if I'm doing exercise, that can bring it on a little bit. Um, you know, not really. I mean, I suppose I cough a little bit more when I'm having a cigarette, but you know, that's kind of expected, I suppose. Okay. And anything that's making it better? No, I wish there was. Have you tried any medications for it? I tried one of my sister's inhalers. It was green one. She uh, she said it was nearly run out. She was about to get another one. I didn't do anything. Okay. And your that inhaler has been given to her for. I know I shouldn't have done it. I, no, I'm no, sorry. It's okay, it's okay. I, to be fair, I, I don't know why she had it. She just said, you know, give it a go before she got a new one. Okay, that's fine. In regards to sort of, because because we're, we're asking about your sister, do you know if there's anything that runs in the family related to chests or anything? Yeah. Um. My dad, he had. COPD, um, and you know, I saw how he got progressively more short of breath and things like that, and I'm worried that I've got that now. Okay, and have you are you on any current medications? Um, I'm taking um, what is it? It's one of those blood pressure ones, uh, Ramipril. And how long have you been taking Ramipril for? Probably about a year or two. And have you noticed any sort of effects when you take Ramipril? Um, no, it seems to be fine. Okay, that's fine. And you've been taking it for a year or so. Mm -hmm. Have you got any allergies at all? No. Anything to feed or drugs or anything like that? No. Nothing like that, that's fine. I'm going to ask you a little bit about your general lifestyle and day-to-day -day work, if that's okay. So you said you're struggling to sort of walk around and stuff, so is that affecting you at work? No, I'm quite lucky now. Um, I'm, uh, I, I work in the office at the sawmill. I used to you know, do more on the factory floor, mm. but now you know, I'm just sat at a desk all day. So were you exposed to quite a lot of dust and stuff? Um, I was years ago, mm. um, but it wasn't for that long. I thankfully got off the factory floor for a couple of years, but yeah, I was. Okay, and do you stay by yourself at home? Yeah. Any pets or anything like that? No. No sort of anything that could be setting you off in regards with the allergies, I'm trying to think, because I know you're not allergic to anything, but sometimes you just don't realise and dust at home or pets or cats could just be a trigger. So I just want to double check. I haven't noticed any clear triggers, no. That's fine. So, so James, you said that you normally your cough's a lot worse when you smoke a cigarette. Mm -hmm. And may I just ask how many a day do you tend to smoke? I'm smoking about a pack a day. I, I know I shouldn't and I'm trying to cut down. And I'm, you know, down to a pack a day is still something, but I can't. It's just so difficult. And how long have you been smoking for? Years. I've probably started when I was about 18. Okay. And do you drink any alcohol? No, I've only got one major vice, and that's the smoking. And any recreational drugs? <laughs> no. Fine. And in regards to the smoking, I know you, s you said you're trying to cut down. Have you at all thought about or joining up the NHS smoking cessation services? I haven't. I thought it was something I could do myself, but I'm clearly not winning. So if you think that would be worthwhile, have I think it'll look. definitely be worth considering because they can offer guidance, support, advice, and sort of nicotine replacement patches, nicorette sprays and things like that. So it's definitely worth looking into. And okay. you're absolutely right, you can sign up yourself, but I can just show you the link and try and talk you through it today, okay. just so you can do that as well. Thank you. And you said before about exercising, so do you exercise regularly? Not really. Uh, it's just if I'm pottering around and doing bits and bobs, I've noticed the shortness of breath, but no, I don't really do much. Fine. And do you have any idea what could be happening to you then, James? Well, as I say, I'm, I'm worried that it's a lung problem now. And I know you're worried about how you said your dad had COPD. Is there anything else that's concerning you regarding the shortness of breath? This is going to get worse, and I'm going to, like my dad, just end up in a chair. I'm sorry to hear, and we'll definitely try and get to the bottom of it and see what's going on. And is there anything that you expect out of the consultation today in particular? I was hoping you could, you know, I don't know, give me a chest x-ray, have a look inside, work out what's going on. Absolutely, that's fine. So what I'm going to do is just do an examination of your lungs and just do a general, have a general examination, and see what the findings are, if that's okay. Sure. So this is where we swap over to um, providing information this way. Um, in terms of the examination findings, uh, he's got a normal pulse of 68, it's um, sinus rhythm. He's got a, a good pl blood pressure of 132 over 78. Um, he's got uh, SATs of 97%, uh, a normal temperature of 36. Um, on examination, you find he's, um, he's overweight. He's got a, a BMI of 28. Um, in terms of the examination, um, he's um, 
slightly um, uh, hyperinflated. Um, he's got good movement otherwise uh, with regard to inspiration and expiration. Um, you don't hear uh, any abnormalities with regard to percussion and his auscultation is normal, trachea is essential um, and there's no added sounds to his uh, breathing so overall you've got a normal respiratory examination as well. So James, based on the examination today it seems that everything's working well. I can't find anything that's amiss so it seems like your lungs are clear so there's no signs of like an active infection or anything like that and I can't hear any sort of struggling breath sounds and it's like you said that today when you came in you're not really short of breath mm -hmm. so that seems to make sense and it's aligning with what you're saying so James based on your examination today everything seems to be working well and it's normal your chest sounds clear and there's no signs of an active infection or anything I forgot to ask you do you bring anything up when you cough um, I do um, it's more often than not, it's just white. Uh, but when I've got you know a, a, a bug, then it often changes to green. Fine. So if you do notice that you know you're sort of bringing up anything that's green or blood or anything like that, definitely get back into contact with us. Okay, I haven't noticed any blood when I've coughed. You know, if the cough gets worse, you feel like you're struggling to breathe at all, you can't get out of bed or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Definitely call us back or nine 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 if required. Next, what we're going to do is just try and do some investigations to see what could be causing the shortness of breath. Mm -hmm. So one of the first things that we're going to do is just to order some blood tests, and that's to check for any signs of anemia. So that could be leading to your shortness of breath. We're also going to check for thyroid function, as this can cause problems with breathing. We're also going to check for a yeast sniffle count, which is a specific type of cell that, seems that goes up when you're having an allergic reaction to something in particular. So that can help diagnose us in that aspect. We'll also order a chest x-ray just to check the fields of your lungs and see everything's clear there in that aspect because it's difficult to just diagnose based on hearing the lungs today. Does that sound okay with you? Sure. So at this stage then, from uh, what are your differentials before you get those results? So currently I'm thinking James might have COPD. Another differential that I want to rule out is any heart failures or any sort of cardiac related problems. So I should have said in my investigations that I would order an ECG as well. And the third would be the Ramipril. So I know that James said that he's currently on Ramipril. And one of the side effects that's quite common to patients on Ramipril is a dry cough. And the way James is describing it, when he's not infected, when he's bringing up the green sputum, it seems to be a dry cough. So that could be a potential diagnosis yeah, that sounds good. Perfect. So, scene change. Uh, we've got a, um, a normal uh, full blood count. Uh, we've got a normal uh, eusenes. In terms of the full blood count, he doesn't have a raised uh, eosinophil level. Uh, we've got a normal LFT uh, and we've got a normal thyroid function test. His ECG didn't show uh, any abnormalities. We've got normal sinus rhythm, no ectopic beats, misbeats uh, or changes to the waveforms that we'd expect. In terms of the chest x-ray, the lungs are slightly hyperinflated, but no other significant uh, abnormalities found on there. So, um, is there anything off the back of those that you'd want to do further in terms of investigations? So, the next line of investigation that I'd like to do is a spirometry, and okay. that's sort of to diagnose whether it's an obstructive or a restricted disease. So, in terms of the spirometry, we've got an FEV1 uh, of 1.8 litres per minute, we've got an FVC of 3.2 litres per minute, and crucially, we've got a, a ratio of uh, less than 0 0.7 there. Fine. So, James, based on all your investigations, we can, we've, ruled, we've noticed that you've, you've got no anemia, so your bloods are all normal and there's no sort of signs of any allergic reactions. We've also, based on the chest x-ray, we can see some sort of hyperinflated lungs, which means you, the way I'm describing it is that it, is, it makes sense that you're finding it difficult to breathe, really. It okay. makes sense that because that, it, your lungs are slightly expanded, so they're working overtime to try and get as much air as possible. Mm -hmm. And the third test that we did do was a spirometry, which is, the definite, which is one of the definitive gold standard diagnosis tests for COPD, and it's come back as an FEV1 and an FVC ratio of less than 0 0.7, which means that you do have COPD. Okay. Is that making sense? It, it is. Uh, I'm not pleased to hear it, but at least we've got an answer. What does that mean for me, though? So, what that means is, I know that you said your dad had COPD, but since then, medications have come a long way, and we can manage it really well. So it can be well controlled, and, and quality of life can be drastically improved. Okay. 
So in regards with the management, there's three ways we can look at it. So we can do what's known as conservative management, where we're not really giving you any medication and we're just changing lifestyle. Okay. And this is quite an important one, especially for you, because as you said that you're currently smoking, that needs to stop and that will have a drastic impact in the quality of life and the shortness of breath that you feel. Okay. So we'll definitely talk about the NHS smoking cessation services and see what we can do in regards with that. Mm-hmm. We can also book you in follow-ups to come back and check with us to let us know how you're getting on with the stopping the smoking. Okay. And we can move from there. Another thing is exercise. So you said to me that you're not really exercising. Not really, no. There's no need. I think there's quite a bit of a need. So as you know, that your BMI is slightly on the higher side as well. Mm-hmm. So it's really worth losing that weight as it's going to help just a general body and it will help with the breathing as well. Mm-hmm. So I want you to try and exercise when you're sort of just short of breath, but you can still speak in full sentences. So mm-hmm. you, you're, you're exerting yourself quite a bit. That's the most important part, because if you're just exercising and just doing light exercise, that's good. I'm not saying it's bad, but for your case, we need to slightly work your lungs harder to be able to get more air in. So it's definitely worth exercising to the point of a little bit of exertion, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Another thing we can offer is medications. Mm -hmm. So in terms of medications, what we can do is we can do a SABA and a LAMA as a first line. A what? So a SABA is a short-acting beta agonist, which is your blue inhaler that you normally give to asthmatics. Right, Okay. And that's going to help with your lungs. And that's the first line that we do. If that doesn't seem to work, then we do a long-acting version of the blue inhaler that I was talking about Mm -hmm. with the LAMA still. And if that still doesn't seem to work, then we do a LABA, LAMA and some steroids, and that's going to help with it as well. Okay. You're going to give me some drugs, though. Okay. Yes. (laughs) Another thing is the Ramapro. Currently, the medication that you're on for your blood pressure can cause a dry cough over time. Oh. And so what we're going to do is we're going to swap you from the Ramapro to another medication, which works very similarly in lowering your blood pressure. It does have a chance of having a side effects such as a cough, but it's much lower than the Ramapro. So mm-hmm. we're going to swap you over to that one and see if that makes any changes. Oh, okay, sure. So we'll definitely give that one a go. Mm-hmm. In regards with what else I can give you is a rescue pack. Mm-hmm. So what a rescue pack is, is it's got prednisolone, which is a steroid, mm-hmm. and amoxicillin, which is a common antibiotic, which you might know from your chest infections. Yeah. So when you get the cough when it's quite bad and you're bringing up the green sputum and you're finding yourself short of breath quite a lot, it's worth to start the rescue pack straight away. Okay. Because that will help fight off any infections and help in general breathing. Okay, super, thank you. So that will be really helpful in regards with that. Another scale that we use to sort of measure the severity of how your COPD is doing or the shortness of breath is doing is the MRC dyspnea scale. Dyspnea just means shortness of breath. Mm -hmm. And currently you're ranked quite mild on that. So it's really worth changing your lifestyle so we can keep it on that scale or lower instead of moving you up the scale and ramping up the medications because that just means that your cough and your shortness of breath is getting worse. Okay, so we'll certainly keep an eye on that. Thank you. Absolutely. Another thing we can offer is to make sure you get your vaccinations on time. So the yearly influenza vaccinations that are offered, make sure you're staying on top of it. Okay, after the coughs uh, over the last winter, I'll definitely make sure I'm doing that, yeah. Perfect. Other than that, that's all for today. That's quite a lot for today. It is quite a lot, and I completely understand that. And if there's any questions or anything that doesn't make sense, definitely do get back in contact with us. Okay. If it gets worse, if you start coughing up blood, if you notice that you can't get out of bed, 999 or give us a call. Super. Well, thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. Very good. Thank you. So there we go. That's uh, the overview of the history um, and how we try to manage an early COPD patient. Um, obviously, it's important to highlight that all management is individualised to the patient. So, for example, here where we've changed the ACE inhibitor. If the patient's not on an ACE inhibitor, that wouldn't be appropriate. But Hopefully this has given you an idea of the overview of a mild COPD patient. Um, If this uh, approach has been useful for yourself, please um, uh, put a comment down below of other histories you'd like us to cover, and we can see if we can build up a little bit of a library here for you to help towards finals. Take care, and we'll see you in the next one. Cheerio.